Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat and we finally received the official Galaxy C9 Pro from Samsung. So let's quickly go ahead and unbox it and see if this device is going to be worth your while. Now, if you ask me, the C9 Pro is more or less targeted at the OnePlus 3 and the OnePlus 3T buyer. But as far as specifications are concerned, I'm not too sure what and why these specifications are there and why the price is 36,900. On the box, it says 41,000 rupees for this phone, uh, but it's actually available for 36,900 rupees. The great thing is that it does have decent specs minus the processor. So let's get quickly unboxing and see what all is inside the box. Now, since this is an Indian retail unit, you'll need to use it with an Indian SIM card before you can travel overseas and use it. Now, inside the box, the first thing is the phone itself. I'm going to place it to the side. You also get a standard in-ear style earpiece. You also have an inline microphone and a 3.5 mm connector at one end. This is a USB type C device. So the cable is a USB type C to USB type A charging and syncing cable. And you also get a USB wall charger which is a Samsung charger. Also inside the box is a micro USB to USB type C adapter. So if you have any old micro USB cables lying around, you can repurpose them to use it with this device. Now it's time to take a look at the phone itself. It's quite a sleek device and we've got the gold color here. It's gonna be available in a black color as well. So over at the front, you have a six inch Super AMOLED display. This is a 1920 by 1080p display. So it's full HD, it's not Quad HD or QHD. Over at the front, you do have a f1.9 aperture lens equipped camera, which is a 16 megapixel camera. It does have wide selfie mode, voice control, gesture uh, and face detection features. All of those are there. Now on the bottom of the device, you do have a physical home button, which is also a fingerprint scanner in the traditional Samsung fashion and flanked on either side of that is the back button as well as the multitasking button in the standard Samsung fashion. Over at the bottom of the device, you have a 3.5 mm headphone jack, which as you can see, sticks out a little bit from the design and so does the USB type C port. You also get a microphone and a speaker, which are surprisingly close to each other. Now over at the right, you'll see two trays. So you can pop in two SIM cards and a micro SD card separately. The device does accept up to 256 gigabyte SD cards, which are micro SD cards. Then you also have the power button. Over at the top, you get the secondary noise cancellation microphone. And over at the left is where your volume buttons are. If you look at the back, you get the same 16 megapixel camera along with the dual tone LED flash. You can see the three antenna lines uh, going from the top as well as the bottom, giving it a slightly unique look. Otherwise it would look like any other phone that is available in a unibody. You also have the glossy Samsung logo over there and some legal information on the bottom of the backside. Overall, the phone is really nice and curves out really well from the sides. And the front does have a 2.5D glass, so it does feel really nice on the finger. As far as responsiveness is concerned, the phone seems to be fast and responsive. Uh, we did set up a fingerprint with the device and it unlocks the device fairly quickly. The device runs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 653 chipset, which is an octa-core chipset. Four cores are running at 1.95 gigahertz and four cores are running at 1.4 gigahertz. You also get the Adreno 510 GPU. Now the device has six gigabyte of RAM and 64 gigabyte of onboard storage. And like I said, it can pop in a 256 gigabyte SD cards. The battery is a 4000 milliamp hour battery, which is quite nice because the device doesn't feel really heavy or bulky. In fact, it's only 6.9 millimeters thick, so it's quite a sleek looking device and it weighs in at 189 grams, which is again, fairly lightweight for a device that has a six inch Super AMOLED display. Now, as far as the operating system is concerned, you do have Android Marshmallow out of the box, but you do get your standard set of Samsung apps as well as Microsoft apps. So some bloatware is preloaded and you can't uninstall those apps, but it's a good thing that you have 64 gigabyte of storage. So it shouldn't really bother you, but you can disable the apps that you won't use. So if you're not going to use the Microsoft suite of applications, you can simply drag them and disable them and you won't see them on your screen, but they'll still be on your device. So if you need to enable them later on, you can do that. Now the camera interface is uh, pretty good as well. You do get a full pro mode along with some other shooting modes which you can employ. The camera will only shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second on the rear as well as the front camera, which is disappointing. The f1.9 aperture on the cameras, including the front as well as the rear camera, gives it a really nice low light picture performance. And we're going to be testing it out when we do a full 
review of this device. Now, like I said, the overall UI is fast, responsive, and clean. Over at the left of the home screen is where your Flipboard or what Samsung calls briefing is. You can get all your latest news and updates, including from iGAN. And then you can also look at how good the viewing angles on the Super AMOLED display are. You can virtually tilt it in any direction and you should get a good viewing angle on this display. It's nice and bright. It does flicker on the camera, as you can probably see. Overall, the device seems sleek, really well built and seems fast and responsive and the display looks really gorgeous. You also have a good set of cameras. My two disappointments for the price bracket are a low end chipset. This is something that you should expect under a 20,000 rupee phone. And also the fact that you can't really capture 4K video for a phone that you're gonna be spending 36,000 rupees for. You have lots of storage on there. That means you have 64 gigabyte on board along with 256 gigabyte via a micro SD card. That means that it would have had enough space to capture 4K video and store it on your device, but they've not given that. You do get a Type-C connector and you do get uh, fast charging using the included charger. But overall, it seems to be a really expensive phone from Samsung. And if they're trying to go against things like the OnePlus 3 or the OnePlus 3T, they still win with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 and 821 chipset. So we'll be doing a full review, guys. If you have any requests for comparisons or for testing please drop them in the comment section below and we'll try and cover it up in the full review of the samsung c9 pro it's definitely a sleek device and for samsung followers or samsung fans uh, this might be a good option but it still seems a little steep for the price that it's been launched at i'll see you guys in the next one if you've not already got yourself an igan t-shirt we're selling out quickly so go get yourself an igan t-shirt i'll drop a link to that in the description below if you're interested in buying the c9 pro i'll also leave a link to that in the description below that's it guys thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one